could the Prime Minister explain why he is intent on forcing good and outstanding schools to become academies against the wishes of teachers, parents, school governors and local councillors? The, the short answer is because we want schools to be run by head teachers and teachers and not by bureaucrats. That is why we support the policy. But we also support it because of the clear evidence of academies. If you look at converter academies, 88% of them are either good or outstanding. And you look at schools started by academies, they see a 10% improvement on average over the first two years. The results are better, education's improving. I say let's complete the work. Mr Speaker, he hasn't managed to convince the former chair of the Education Select Committee, his friend the member for Beverley and Holderness, who said, and I quote, current evidence does not prove that academies raise standards overall or for disadvantaged children. Why is the Prime Minister ignoring evidence of Select Committee chairs and so many others on this issue? The results speak for themselves. Under this Government, there are 1.4 million more pupils in good or outstanding schools. But let me me take him to a school near where he lives. Let's try the Downhills Primary School, not far from his constituency. It was in special measures. It was taken over by an academy. And two years later, it was a good school. So the question I would put to the Leader of the Opposition and indeed so many of other MPs opposite, why do you want to stand on a picket line under a banner saying save our failing school? Mr Speaker, as he well knows, every teacher, every parent, every pupil wants the best they can get for their schools and they want a good education system. What many are concerned about is this top-down reorganisation. If he won't listen to the former chair of the Education Select Committee, will he listen to his friend, the member for Colchester, who said this, if a school is well-governed, well-run and performing well, it should be left alone and allowed to do its job. Can the Prime Minister explain why good school leaders should focus their time and resources not on educating children, but on arbitrary changes imposed from above? Let, 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 me, make, let me make two points on, on the specific issue he raises. I would say to outstanding or to good schools, they have nothing to fear from becoming academies, but a huge amount to gain. The truth is, even about outstanding or good schools, we want them to be even better. And the truth is, academies and greater independence, letting head teachers run their schools, has been hugely effective. And actually, this is something started by the Labour government, given rocket boosters under this government. We see massive improvements in our schools because of academies, and we say, let's get on with it, finish the job, and give all our children a great opportunity. Mr Speaker, I'm sure the Prime Minister is aware of the views of people in Oxfordshire on this issue. (laughs) Councillor Tilley, the Conservative Cabinet Members for Education in his own county, said, I'm fed up with diktats from above, (laughs) saying, you will do this and you won't do that. He claims to be an advocate of devolution. So is he not concerned about criticisms from his friend, the member for Altrincham and Sale West, who says there is little accountability or parental involvement? Can't the Prime Minister understand the anger so many people feel that are just being imposed on them a system they don't want on what are often already very good, if not outstanding, schools? Well, it's, it's always good to get a lecture on diktats from someone whose press secretary is an avowed Stalinist, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pass over that. I'll pass over that. The truth is, the truth is, creating academies is true devolution because you're putting the power in the hands of the head teachers and the teachers. And of course, of course, you'll find people in local government who want to keep things exactly as they are. But the truth is, one of the reasons I so strongly support academies is that when they fail, they're intervened on so much faster. Local authority schools are often left to fail year after year after year. 
I think one year of a failing school is one year too many. So let's encourage academies, let's build a great education system, and let's have opportunity for all our children. Mr Speaker, last week um, I spent a very interesting afternoon at a local school in my constituency. I visited Duncan Primary School and it is a good to outstanding school and I had a long discussion with the head teacher, parents, parent governors and Year 6 pupils. The Year 6 pupils were very interesting. Hawan, Tasnia, Eamon and Mary Ann asked me to say this to the Prime Minister. Why are you doing this? They love their school. They like the school the way it is. They don't want any top-down reorganisation. And he hasn't even convinced the former Education Secretary, Kenneth Baker, who says, I don't quite know why the government is doing this. What's his answer to those very smart pupils in Year 6? My answer to those pupils in Year 6 is actually very much the answer that he gave, because I was following his tour of this school. And this is what the right hon. Gentleman said. He said this, I want to see a family of schools, and I want to see them properly funded. Now, of course, with our reform to the national funding formula, there will be fair funding right across the country. And with our plans, and with our plans for academies, there will be genuine families of schools, families that choose to group together. And here's the point about outstanding schools. Not only will they be able to get better, but in groups of academies, they'll be able to help other schools to improve. So again, that's why we need this reform, to make outstanding schools, good schools even better, and to help raise the aspiration of all. That's what it's all about. Mr Speaker, we appear to be heading into some kind of fantasy land here. The Institute... The Institute for Fiscal Studies, the Institute for Fiscal Studies states that school spending is expected to fall by at least 7% in real terms in the next 4 years, the biggest cut since the 1970s. So why on earth is the Prime Minister proposing to spend 1.3 billion pounds on a top-down reorganisation that wasn't in his manifesto? Teachers don't want it, parents don't want it, governors don't want it, head teachers don't want it, even his own MPs and councillors don't want it. Can't he just think again and support schools and education, not force this on them? Well, well, let me answer his question very directly about spending, because we have, of course, protected, we have protected spending per pupil all the way through the last Parliament and all the way through this Parliament, and we're spending £7 billion on more school places to make up for the woeful ac- lack of action under the last Labour government. That is the truth on spending. Now, he talks about fantasy land. I think it's the Labour Party that this week entered fantasy land, when they are now abandoning Trident in Scotland. They've selected someone who sits on platforms with extremists in London, and they've now decided... When I read, when I read they were going to ban McDonnell from the party conference, I thought it was the first sensible decision they've made. But it turns out it wasn't the job destroyer they wanted to keep away from their conference. It was one of Britain's biggest employers. No wonder, no wonder Labour MPs are in despair. Frankly, I'm loving it. Yeah.